Yeah. Not increasing now, so uh, maybe we, Nicola, huh? we, yeah. we shall uh, start. So I'll have a few words before. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Um, as you may uh, remember, I'm a co-chair of uh, Force uh, CCS group. And uh, Oliver, having uh, bailed out at the last moment, uh, I'm uh, <laughs> honored to um, to chair the uh, the uh, today's presentation. And today we have uh, Nicola Marsh, who's going to present us uh, NCCS, and I think you're going to present us also Giga uh, CCS. So uh, personally, working at OMV, we have uh, just <laughs> joined the uh, uh, Giga CCS, or at least expressed our interest. So uh, I can definitely uh, confirm uh, this sounds uh, exciting, but uh, you will you will tell us more uh, about it. Yes. So Nicola, please. Uh, you can Thank uh, you, Oliver. start. Thank you so much. Yeah, so good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for the invitation to speak here today at uh, this webinar. So I would like to talk to you about the role of research in reaching our 2030 and 2050 climate targets. And I'll do it through the lens of research centres for environment friendly energy. And you just mentioned both the Norwegian CCS Research Centre and uh, Giga CCS, which is a new proposed centre that we've uh, developed. So very briefly about myself, uh, Nicola Marsh, I work at Sint of Energy Research and the centre manager for the Norwegian CCS Research Centre. Um, but I haven't always been that. I've trained as a geologist and worked for 15 years in oil and gas before I made a career change to pursue my interest in CCS. Um, and myself and my team have recently submitted the proposal that we just uh, mentioned, Giga CCS, and I'll come back to that at the end of my presentation. So my uh, Plan for the presentation today. I'll start a little bit with a challenge and a brief history of CCS in terms of research, and then we'll dive into NCCS first and then uh, further into Giga CCS. So, the challenge. Um, why then do I get out of bed in the morning to work on CCS, and why did I make this change that I just described to you uh, to, to pursue my interest in CCS? For me, my motivation is, is very clear. Uh, the IPCC have issued a, a final call earlier this year for urgent uh, climate action before it's too late uh, in order to re reach this window to keep within our one and a half degree C target. Uh, so the challenge ahead of us is huge. We need to mitigate from billions of tons to uh, uh, we need to mitigate, sorry, billions of tons of uh, gross CO2 emissions annually in order to avoid emissions, but also to compensate for historical emissions using uh, carbon dioxide removal, such as uh, BEX. So action is clear. CCS is not the only solution, but it, it is an integral part of uh, uh, the solution to get to a net zero emissions future. So with that as our backdrop, let's look at some context in terms of numbers then. Our collective challenge is to reach gigaton scale CCS, with a significant portion of that coming from uh, carbon dioxide removals by 2050. So the numbers in the figures on the left are taken from the International Energy Agency's predictions of how many millions of tonnes of CO2 we need to be capturing by 2050, with the small circles, these darker circles, representing how much we're capturing and storing globally today in 2023. The larger circles showing where we need to get to. Um, this task involves a minimum 100 times increase in capture and storage in the next 26 years. So we're talking about significant scale up. Uh, numbers can be daunting, but I think it's important to remind ourselves of them. Um, but why CCS then? Can we manage without it or is it is it something that we have to do? Um, I've put together three perspectives here on why CCS is important to meet net zero. First, uh, we have to provide uh, low carbon electricity, and this is one way to provide uh, a reliable dispatchable power. Secondly, decarbonisation of hard to abate sectors such as cement, uh, steel, these are sectors that cannot uh, decarbonise with the current renewables uh, portfolio. And then negative emissions, use of carbon dioxide removals to compensate for historical emissions. So with that as our backdrop, how do we make this happen? Let's look first to our 2030 goal. So in 2023, we are on track to capture 44 million tonnes of CO2. 
Uh, the number of projects under construction and advanced development is rising to the mid and latter half of this decade, and yet the capacity of large scale CO2 capture projects falls behind the net zero scenario of 1.6 gigatons per year by 2030. The figure on the right is showing the gap then between current captured volumes required in storage and the amount, uh, sorry, the announced available CO2 storage capacity. And we could discuss the validity of this figure. This figure was made uh, some couple of years ago now, prior to the rise in number of CO2 storage li licenses that we see being awarded in Norway and elsewhere in Europe. But I think the message still applies that we cannot afford a chicken and egg scenario in which we see emitters uh, waiting for storage site capacity to be matured before investing in capture technology or vice versa. So we need a holistic approach along the whole value chain in order to secure our gigaton uh, targets by 2050. Um, simply said, we need to speed up and we need to scale up the implementation of CCS. So we need to move from our current storage capacity on the Northern Lights project, which is around 1.5 million tonnes a year in operation next year, getting up to an exponential growth and getting up to gigatons per year by, by 2050. And we cannot do that alone. Um, we need strong leadership in order to spark action in the deployment of CCS at scale. A lot has happened in recent years. I need not mention the major milestone in the signing of the Paris Agreement. Um, but since then, in Europe, politicians have been paving the way with initiate, init, initiatives such as the European Green Deal, uh, Fit for 55, and, and more recently, the RE Power EU in response to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Um, Political will is a very important part in uh, enforcing change, and we see that that change is indeed happening. So in terms of drive and interest, we seem to be on an all time high uh, in terms of collaborative agreements, political interest and funding available, not least with the introduction of the uh, Inflation Reduction Act in the US last year. So we seem to be on the edge of a significant transformation. I hope so. Um, before we look forward then at, at, at the current research centre and also forward to the next one, let's take a quick look back, a uh, brief history of um, CCS and its political attractiveness. So one way to illustrate this, that it hasn't always been plain sailing for CCS, uh, is that CCS has indeed has its dark ages and its golden ages. So this is a political attractiveness curve confirming those highs and lows. Um, this figure looks back a little more than 30 years to 1996 when the Schleipner field started to capture and store CO2. Uh, and we see this waxing and waning in interest and, and CCS has never really taken off, but the technology has matured. And I would argue much of that is rooted in collaboration between research institutes and universities and industry that's been carried out along the way. Uh, so R&D investment is important uh, and can make a difference. So it is indeed an investment and not an expense. Um, the figure was made in 2016 and you see these uh, dotted lines and question marks as to what direction is CCS going to go in in, 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 2020, in in 2016, sorry. And I've taken the liberty to project onto this figure uh, to demonstrate the upturn that we need in attractiveness and that we indeed have in, in current momentum for, for CCS. Um, you could argue that this curve that I've predicted is even steeper to illustrate that current landscape, but indeed I think we're going in the right direction. So I chose to use this summary of CCS projects. This is from the Global CCS Institute demonstrating the increase in number of CO2 capture projects in operation, in construction and in advanced development in the last 50 years. And the evolution goes from a few operational projects, um, mainly in gas processing plants, to more of a cluster of projects in development in the next five or so years. Um, and what you notice is the range in the scale of facilities is becoming broader and it's covering a wider, wider range of industries. So on here we have uh, two uh, emitters in Norway, uh, the Hafshund Oslo Celsius plant, uh, waste of energy, and also the Norsem um, uh, cement plant in, in Norway that are both uh, currently building uh, facilities to capture emissions from their uh, industries. 
So again, I would argue here that research has had a role to play in terms of the evolution, providing continuity in the form of um, enabling an incremental build and technology maturation, uh, providing collaborative space. And this is a very important part of what we do in research centres. We pro provide a collaborative space to share knowledge, share lessons learned, uh, enabling the spin-off of innovation and launch to mar market, and also working alongside universities to educate and, of course, build capacity, which is important for, for future jobs in the workforce. So all of this despite highs and lows in political attractiveness. And this is uh, a point well made in a summary slide like this. This is a project portfolio from Sintef. Um, and our job in Sintef is to be at the forefront, performing world leading research, tapping into resources that we need to make it happen. And how do we do this? Well, we summarize around the edge of this uh, figure. Um, first of all, we need to bring uh, financing from research bodies in Norway, but also Europe and beyond uh, to the table in order to be able to uh, make projects happen. We work on solving problems that are direct of direct uh, interest to industry. And here are some of the industries we have worked with over the years. Um, and industry are indeed the driving force of the work that we carry out. So collaborations either on a one-to-one -one, uh, perspective or in terms of several partners in a consortium are, are essential for the work that we do. And we have access to uh, frontier researchers and academic institutions, providing and educating uh, experts and also providing access to research infrastructure. So, Instant F collaboration is the foundation of what we do, as well as a necessary coordination uh, required to make projects happen. Um, this is a non-exhaustive list of projects and collaborations carried out in within CCS uh, in the last 35 to 40 years in Sintef. What I will do now, there are many types of projects. Uh, what I have worked on in my time in Sintef is uh, highlighted here in the light blue research centres. So uh, I will hop in now to first uh, the current uh, centre, Norwegian CCS Research Centre, and then I will go further into what might be, we hope, our, our future research centre. So NCCS. Um, NCCS is coordinated by Sintef Energy Research here in Trondheim, and we like to say it's the world leading research centre on CCS, and we believe that's the case. First of all, what is a centre of environment friendly energy research? Um, this is financed by the Research Council of Norway. Uh, this is a type of research centre that lasts for eight years. So we're now in the seventh year of NCCS, uh, coming uh, planning or making plans for our final year next year before we launch if we get awarded a GIGA CCS in 2025. So this is the highest profile, most visible initiative funded by the Research Council of Norway with attention at a uh, political level. So we had the energy uh, minister visiting us last week to discuss NCCS and indeed uh, Giga CCS. Uh, an FME, FME is the Norwegian acronym, I should say, it's a Centre for Environment Friendly Energy Research coordinate, is a coordinating instrument. So it's a very important networking opportunity for our partners. And we work on everything from blue sky thinking, which you see here, we call TRL 1 to 2, which is technology readiness level, uh, all the way up to applied R&D, uh, technology ready level readiness level six. Uh, beyond that, we uh, launch into different types of projects in order to get uh, research and ideas into tests, uh, pilots, demos, and of course, commercialization is the ultimate goal. The first center of this type was awarded in 2009, which was an early effort from Norway to invest in areas of strategic importance for energy politics. And, and NCCS has had an active role to play in Europe, where we've used, uh, we do use fact-based research results in outreach outside the scientific community. So we do have a, a role to play in terms of informing decisions on policy and market development. So the text you see on this slide is taken directly from the Research Council to describe what this kind of project does. I like to summarize it in my following slide, which is uh, four pillars that define how we can have an impact through this kind of centre. So what are those four pillars? Well, first of all, collaboration or partnership. Um, this is an opportunity to build a knowledge network on various levels. Uh, we'll come back to showing you how we organise a centre like this, but there are various networks and various committees in which one can build uh, and share knowledge. 
Second, of course, uh, the foundation of what we do in Syntav is research and innovation. Uh, we generate research excellence, we generate spin-off projects. We work on, in this context, open knowledge sharing. So we publish the results of uh, the, the work that we carry out in a centre like this. We share data and we work on dissemination to a wider audience. So uh, stakeholders such as, I mentioned politicians, uh, the general public as well is an important part of the outreach that we work on in a centre like this to educate about CCS. Innovation, we work hard to lift ideas from concept through to development and demonstration uh, to get uh, the greatest value creation of innovation uh, potential out of the work that we carry out. Capacity building then, uh, filling knowledge gaps and also providing a stream of educated specialists to the workforce is an important part of what we do and one thing that industry or one of the things that industry highlight to us as an important part of uh, this kind of centre for, for the future CCS industry. And then I've mentioned a little bit about strategic engagement. Uh, we are professional and visionary leaders who, who look to influence national and international uh, politics. So as a partnership then uh, in NCCS, we perform applied research in collaboration with industry to address three critical barriers to support the deployment of CCS. So we work together to reduce the cost, to respond to the need for unprecedented scale up and to reduce risk, be it financial, operational or otherwise. And who are our partners? Well, this is uh, NCCS in a nutshell, if I can put everything on one slide. Uh, around the edges here, you see our partnership. We work with users. Uh, in this case, users can be energy companies. Uh, we have some industry partners here, uh, as well as uh, Oslo Kommune are also in NCCS. Um, we have our vendors and industry organisations. Um, again, a mix here of different types of vendors from across the chain, uh, research institutes and also uh, universities. And our baseline research portfolio, you see in the centre here, these 12 uh, blue circles. We work across the whole value chain from everything from uh, value uh, chain and legal, legal aspects through capture to transport and then into storage. In addition, we leverage uh, any surplus funding that we have to apply for competence building projects in spinning out into additional uh, research projects have come into NCCS as we've we've gone along and I'll, I'll show you a, uh, an illustration of what we've built on top of this uh, baseline portfolio and with those we have associated partners that come in to join the consortium. So again, building uh, connections to a bigger and wider network as we go. So I won't go into the details, but this is just to give you an appreciation of how such a centre is organised. Uh, as a consortium, we have a, a a general assembly and, and a, a board, uh, which is uh, they are taking decisions on uh, major decisions in the centre and how we should use financing and, and who we should collaborate with. We then have uh, various committees who are advising on both strategic and scientific uh, uh, ways to go, as well as a technical advisory committee from uh, representing all industry partners. And in the centre here, you see the operation centre, and that is where uh, I am managing the centre and our director, Munda Mulvik, is taking the lead. So uh, in the operations centre, we are making sure that we are delivering as planned uh, and also, of course, making sure that everything comes together as, as, uh, as it's supposed to do. So in terms of our whole uh, reach, outreach and, and everybody in this kind of uh, consortium, we have direct access to over 120 people through our operations centre in each of these committees and, and boards and so on. And each of those reach out to an even wider audience. So it gives you an appreciation of the scale of this kind of uh, centre. Uh, so here you see, uh, uh, just to illustrate again, uh, the, the kind of scale and the amount of people that we are, are talking to. So if we look then to our time scale and what we have in terms of our research portfolio. So across the top here, I've taken our baseline research uh, work packages uh, and each of these gray lines indicates projects that's come in in addition to that. So we have 13 additional projects that have come uh, through the lifetime of the center. And you can see that each of these has a slightly shorter lifetime, They're shorter term projects uh, where we have uh, industry agreement to, as to what we should apply for. And then, uh, of course, 
um, shorter term kind of um, competence building projects in order to, to maximize um, uh, impact of, of the, the funding that we have in a center like this. And what we've seen as we've gone along in the lifetime of the center is that the partnership has grown. So we had a very solid partnership in the beginning. And as we've gone through time, uh, we've had more companies joining uh, the center, both uh, users and vendors, uh, both as in terms of uh, direct partners into the center and also these associated partners coming along with these extra projects. And this represents the uh, says something about the momentum we see in terms of CCS as at the moment uh, that um, more partners are joining and we're speaking to, to industry. I would say regularly in industries who are interested in what we're doing in the in a center like this. Uh, so in a little bit more detail, these are those projects, we call them spin in projects or competence building projects funded by the Research Council in Norway and our, our industry partners. Again, these cover the whole value chain um, and bring with them a connection to a wider network as we as we go in the center. Uh, we have five projects that have been more recently awarded and are uh, initiating and now uh, will be recruiting PhDs uh, to to their uh, uh, project portfolios. So indeed, we will be growing the numbers in terms of how many students we've educated through the centre. Uh, another important part of what we do is connecting to a larger group of international experts, not only in our own consortium, but collaborating and sharing ideas uh, across the globe. And in NCCS, we have a mobility grant to encourage researchers and uh, either research scientists in institutes or indeed PhDs, postdocs to collaborate. So we, this is a, one indication of directions that uh, researchers have gone and some of the institutes that we collaborated with in terms of um, spending time with each other to, to learn and share ideas. And then I've talked to you about uh, the research portfolio and we've, I've, we have these additional projects that we've brought in along the way. Another important part of what we do is spin off projects. So these are projects that are built uh, once we reach that uh, technology readiness level of six and we want to start to go further in terms of piloting, testing and then commercialization. We take uh, the knowledge from a center like NCCS and we spin it off into a new project. So I'll give you two examples. One is this uh, access project, a large EU project where Sintef are coordinating the collaboration and we're aiming to facilitate new CCUS value chains in Europe. Um, the project started in May 2021 and it's a four year project. Um, it is taking a cross sectoral approach. So we have pulp and paper in the project, cement, waste to energy, biorefining, all industries with a big potential for CDR. And we have a lead and learn approach. So lead Norway has the Longship Project, a uh, leading project in Europe, and we've built competence business models uh, we're delivering. So Norway has demonstrated its strength in delivery, and then we learn by taking that competence, or so help uh, in learning for others, take our competence and knowledge and experience and expand similar contexts in and beyond, uh, similar concepts in and beyond Europe. So one aspect of uh, access is looking to provide access routes for CO2 capture and flexible transport and storage infrastructure. So linking the value chain. So an example here, looking at uh, potential to capture CO2 from new industry more inland in hard to reach areas and then uh, using, for example, it could be barges along rivers as one potential uh, way to connect inland areas to, to these uh, hubs. And then, of course, uh, up to storage sites in, in, uh, in Norway in this case. Uh, we also have a test pilot. Uh, it's been at Hofschland in uh, Oslo and uh, it's also moved across to Poland. So the first test pilot in CCUS technology in Eastern Europe, which we're very proud of. Uh, another type of project or another example is links. I think you've had links uh, present as well in the force uh, webinars. Uh, links is also a spin off of uh, NCCS and another center, Lower Mission. Uh, where the two consortiums have come together and developed this project and again to, to take what we know and then launch it further up the technology readiness level uh, scale. And so this one is is uh, Arca Solutions leading the project, Equinor and Vochlia and Arca BP have sub projects um, and 
yeah, various parts of this project, but one of them is looking at CO2 capture uh, for offshore power production, making a digital twin in order to enable unmanned CO2 capture plant uh, operation offshore. So two examples of, of spin-off projects. Um, how else can we take research ideas and put them into action? So we have in NCCS had a focus on innovation uh, and the impact of what our work is something that we've continued to focus on to, to try to raise the bar and lift innovation out of our research. So we want to close the gap between academic work and, and industry use. Um, rationale is, of course, that the potential impact of research should be monitored to help ensure that our effort is directed in the most effective way. So uh, in dialogue with our industry partners, we developed an innovation programme in 2021. Um, and we've had a series of what we call innovation sprints, where researchers are uh, taken through an entrepreneur school and, and taught to think into the slightly different mindset about what their research could could do and mean in terms of uh, projecting it into a business plan. We've had support from an external company to do so uh, and worked across the board, thinking across uh, across task, if you like, not just on your own uh, piece of the chain, but also how could it be seen as a, with a broader, more holistic perspective. Uh, we mapped 31 innovations, of which 26 have been described in more detail in our innovation catalogue. Uh, again, we went through a coursing a school, uh, it's called Entrepreneurial School, for students and researchers uh, and, uh, who are taking science-based methods and developing entrepreneurial skills. Uh, one example was this, the running ductile fracture model, uh, designing pipes uh, to avoid cracks developing into running uh, fractures. And current existing tools do not have the correct physics in terms of CO2 as opposed to natural gas. And so detailed studies have been performed on fracture control in pipelines. Important, of course, to ensure safe designs and to cut costs of pipelines, but also relevant when planning pipelines, well, anywhere, but for example, now we have the Norga uh, between Germany and Norway pipeline. So one example of an innovation that's described in our catalogue, and that catalogue is available on our website. So that's sort of taking a perspective of research, um, spin-off projects, spin-in projects, we call them as well, and then innovation. How do we take innovations to, to um, yeah, closer to market? Um, Another very important part of what we do in NCCS is a webinar series. So we have an open webinar series. You can look on our website to see what's coming. We have them every two weeks, a lunch and learn style uh, approach where we have a mix of industry and researchers presenting. So this is an opportunity for a slightly deeper dive. It's a 25 minute presentations uh, recorded and then shared within our consortium. We also do a lot of work on public outreach. Uh, this is just some examples of articles, op-eds, uh, podcasts, uh, work that we do to, to educate decision makers uh, so that we make knowledge-based decisions, uh, educate the public so that they understand enough about CCS in order to uh, yeah, accept in a sense that it's an, an essential part of what we need to do for net zero emissions. Um, and Another thing that we do is talk, well, is talk to, for example, school children about uh, CCS. That's one thing that we've done to, to talk about it in different levels to different stakeholders. Another project we have, CO2 data share. Some of you have probably heard of it. I won't talk in too much detail about CO2 data share, but it is a very important uh, project and we have taken it into the umbrella of NCCS to maintain and keep this digital portal uh, going. Uh, we have a good collaboration, I will just skip to this, showing the kind of data sets that we share. This is public, uh, publicly available, free to download, and we have many, many downloads and a lot of interest um, in these data sets and what we're trying to do in NCC is to expand the data that's actually available in the data share. Uh, so we have four data sets in there at the moment, and we've just expanded it to include uh, data from the Northern Lights uh, Geomechanical data set from the Northern Lights uh, well that was drilled uh, in January 2019. Uh, so that's new to the, to the portal and we're trying to expand it to cover the whole value chain. So what else can we share in terms of data from capture, from transport uh, and keep building on what's there, which is mainly focused on, on storage at the moment. 
So we're looking for uh, long-term operation and maintenance of the, the data and the functionality and, and to share more data sets. And then uh, final slide before I conclude a little bit on NCCS is what else do we do? We also organize and, and uh, uh, put together the TCCS conference that was in June this year, record number of people attended. Uh, usually we have between four to 450. We had actually 610 participants this year. So really a uh, huge interest in this conference and it was a big success. And that also falls into the umbrella of NCCS. So uh, I, start, I mentioned these barriers that we work on uh, in NCCS and we work to overcome those barriers by working together. And here I highlight three things. We work on excellence, we work to collaborate and we work in partnerships. And we will continue to do that also in Giga CCS, which I'll hope to do uh, take a look at now. Um, Giga CCS then is a new project. It's a new research centre with a new partnership, and I'll show you uh, a little bit about that. But it is the same type of centre, uh, Research Centre for Environment Friendly Energy, um, funded by the Research Council of Norway. So um, time-wise, this will pick up as NCCS uh, comes to an end, but again with a new partnership. So the Rationale being, and I've already mentioned the speeding up and the scaling up, that we need to get to the gigaton scale uh, per year uh, within the next yeah, 20 or so years. How can we get the, the how can we uh, make that exponential growth? And, and we need to get moving and we need to do it now. So um, that's the kind of rationale and the vision behind what we're doing in, in Giga CCS. Um, these are the objectives then, or the vision of the centre. So to accelerate the deployment of CCS at gigaton scale for net zero emissions by 2050. And many of these verifi verifiable sub-objectives you will recognise from uh, what I just said about the pillars of NCCS. So we're looking at creating value, that is innovation. We're looking at uh, building capacity, so that's our education part. We're looking at strengthening a national and international project portfolio. Um, and again, here we mentioned engagement with policymakers in Europe, a, a very important part of what we do, strategic engagement, providing data, uh, something we get as feedback from industry, we need more data to make decisions and, and, and yeah, for models and so on, and crucially build credibility uh, for CCS, and that involves a informed public dialogue rooted in uh, knowledge. So. The centre overview, where did we end up? So we sent this proposal last week on Wednesday. Um, a very good collaboration between uh, a strong industry uh, and research partnership in order to, to build this proposal. So really good collaborative work. We ended up with 12 R&D partners and 30 industry partners, as well as 14 associated partners. I'll come back to showing you what the difference between those is in a minute and uh, letters of support from 15 international universities. So a very strong uh, uh, partner portfolio. In terms of education, we plan to educate at least 28 PhDs and at least 50 MSCs and BSc candidates. And that will take place across eight universities, three in Norway, five internationally. And the final budget for the proposal was over 500 million krona, of which we've applied for 200 million from the Research Council itself. Um, and the circle to the right here illustrates, again, uh, some of those uh, key parts of what we do in a, in a centre like this. We build a strategic network and international collaboration. We uh, educate, we build capacity. We have a, an innovation engine that we describe in Giga CCS. Uh, we will work on digitalization as a as a cross cutting element of what we do, and R and D deep dive is referring to the fact that we will we will have a, a portfolio or a baseline research portfolio, but we will also have more deep dive type uh, approach to what um, focused projects for for industry to to help us to develop along the way. So here's the centre concept. We have divided ourselves into four mission areas, covering the whole value chain. Uh, starting with capture and CDR, moving through infrastructure into storage, and of course across all of those three we have uh, the value chain. 
So we will have research on each of these. Uh, research activities will be shared or responsibility will be shared between uh, research partners at different geographical locations. Uh, so this is very much collaborative in terms of Norway's expertise on uh, research expertise on, on CCS. Use cases will be cross-cutting and industry-driven case studies. So this is what I was referring to in terms of a deep dive. So industry may say to us, we want to do a short-term uh, deep dive into a certain topic, and that's what we can uh, facilitate in the, the, the centre. And we've already described two cases, one on BEX and one on multimodal transport, but there will be opportunity to describe and, and uh, facilitate more. Innovation will be a key part of what we do again, and also capacity building. Uh, in terms of impact, we've defined three strategic focus areas for the centre. Uh, one is efficiency, innovation and credibility. Uh, each of them are described here. Uh, in terms of efficiency, we're looking at how to reduce cost, but also improve technical performance and efficiency of robust and novel technologies to accelerate transition to net zero. Um, boosting innovation is about shortening the time to market, and we've talked a bit about that from NCCS. In, in Giga CCS, we've designed a what we call an innovation engine to make this an even more efficient way to get from research into commercialization. And then finally, last but not least, how to improve credibility in terms of public awareness of and acceptance of CCS. It's becoming increasingly understood that uh, having public acceptance on the ground when you decide to implement uh, CCS in a location, whatever that may be, is an essential part to keep uh, keep the, uh, yeah, how do you say, keep the speed in the process so we don't have any bottlenecks along the way. And we've described our centre impact in three phases. Uh, so a planned uh, approach, uh, thought through approach in terms of phase one, two and three. Uh, first of all, supporting scale up and hub development. Secondly, accelerating technology uptake and improve credibility. And then finally, delivering solutions and gigascale deployment. And again, these link directly back into those three uh, strategic focus areas I just described, uh, innovation, effect, effectiveness and credibility. Uh, and then the final one on here is, uh, is competence building and, and, and capacity building, which is always an essential part of what we do in, in a research centre. And this is our partnership. So this is where I was uh, leading us to. Um, this was the final partnership on Wednesday at one o'clock when we sent the, we sent the proposal. Uh, you see our R&D partnership there. We brought together Norway's national competence as well as five international uh, universities who will be there to also provide and support in terms of education of PhDs. Uh, eight energy companies, uh, Eight, uh, what we call industry, uh, could be emitters or, or indeed um, transport oper um, pipeline operators, uh, and then vendors, uh, of which we have many, and again, covering the whole value chain. So really strong. We're very pleased with the partnership as it's, uh, as it's come together. Uh, in addition, we have what we call associated. And the, the idea here with these 14 associated partners is to bring together interested partners partners or interested organisations who are working to develop a CCS chain uh, in order to uh, boost communication and knowledge sharing between uh, uh, parties in order to uh, accelerate as, as, as much as we can the deployment of CCS. So, for example, we have uh, CO2 Borg, CO2, CCS Haugalan, Can CO2, these are hubs, clusters, interested organisations. We have uh, Oslo Kommune, Trondheim Kommune, so all uh, different interested parties who are trying their best to, to support the deployment of CCS in different ways. Um, what we want to do is avoid uh, making the same mistakes twice if mistakes have indeed been made or share knowledge in terms of how to, to, to best implement CCS in, in, uh, uh, in, yeah, in the best possible way. So it's a network along the side of, of the, of the centre. So I will start to round off. I started by talking about climate targets and I've taken us on a journey through uh, research and into two different research centres. Um, how then do I link this back to our short term goal that 
that would be 2030 goals and then our, our longer term perspective in terms of climate and what we can do as a research uh, institute and as a research centre. So um, if we look to the implementation plan then for GigaCCS, which I'm showing here on the left, we have five years from our start up to the 2030 target. And of course, that's not very long in terms of doing uh, research studies and, and, and impacting uh, whether or not we can indeed reach those goals. Um, what would I say in terms of our role in, in reaching that target? Well, I think in the short term, we need to be deploying as much of the uh, knowledge and innovation that we have already developed in order to uh, best reach our 2030 goals. But in the longer term, we need to be working on uh, continuing to develop new and novel technology as well as building on and um, and strengthening existing robust capture technologies. And that's two of the things we've described in, in GIGAS CCS. Um, also in the short term, maximizing knowledge sharing and learning by doing, which is why we've built this uh, partnership of associated uh, interested groups to bring together hubs uh, and to avoid, again, repeating the same types of mistakes and or helping each other to know how to optimally get to our, our same, ultimately the same goal. And, and again, credibility runs here through this. Uh, credibility has an important role to play in terms of uh, rolling out CCS as a viable climate mitigation tool. So there are ways in which research can impact on the short term, uh, but also it has a very important role to play for a longer term perspective in terms of developing new ideas, uh, uh, blue sky thinking and uh, optimising existing uh, uh, ideas and technologies. So I'll summarise by saying I'm optimistic about the future of CCS. It feels like we're, we're on the right path to positive change and on a tipping point to transformation. Uh, that said, speed is everything uh, and efficiency is key if we're to reach our net zero targets. Uh, so we need a high quality, by that I mean no, no, uh, no stoppers, no leaks, uh, quick transition. Now, how then do we efficiently reach these targets? I hope I've convinced you that there are four pillars that I've described as the foundation of a centre of environment friendly research that are uh, helpful in that transition. And knowledge should be the foundation of the decisions made. So in a fast moving transition, we need to closer collaboration between research and industry. Sharing information is the fastest path to implementation. Uh, collaboration coordination uh, across the whole CCS community is essential to deploy CCS and education and capacity building to foster bright new ideas and generate capacity needed to drive the CCS industry is also key. And finally, innovation to take new ideas to the market and access to capital in order to lift innovations to the market. With that, I thank you for your time. And any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you, uh, Nicola. Thank you very much Thanks. for this uh, nice presentation. I uh, wanted to uh, remind everyone that this session is uh, uh, recorded and that this recording will be available to everyone as soon as uh, the um, it is uh, edited properly. Um, I would also uh, name that um, I think this is Cedric Feynmendi from uh, Vor Energy who uh, uh, gave the idea to uh, invite you. So I would like to thank him, although he had to uh, actually leave. And uh, before uh, asking everyone uh, if there are questions, I, I would like then to ask his question uh, yeah. because he had to leave. Uh, and the question was, uh, you have submitted the application already with LOIs from industry. Is it still possible for those interested to join at a later stage? Good question. And uh, in short, the answer is yes. I showed you the, I showed you the um, evolution of NCCS and where we've built on the partnership we had from the beginning, and strengthened it with several partners along the way. Uh, but of course, as we build and bring a new partner, it, ultimately the decision goes to the board, and the board gets to decide whether or not uh, a company can join. Uh, it's it would be unusual to say no, I think, for the board because uh, it's in inter our interest, and and I think all the companies tend to agree that the more we can talk and share with each other, the better. So we've never had a no, but uh, it is ultimately the board that decides. Yeah. Thank you. 
Thank you. And uh, we will uh, transmit the uh, the answer. And um, it is probably because Vor Energy is already part of it yeah. <laughs> or has already expressed his interest. So yeah. I guess this is more uh, to the uh, attention of uh, other uh, actors. So are there any questions in the attendance? Don't be shy. <laughs> I do my best to not bite. Uh, we were up to 28 people and uh, yeah. out of the 31 uh, uh, invitations and I see still uh, 23 people present. Mm -hmm. uh, if there aren't questions right now, I would like to make just one. It's not really a question, but a remark. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, personally, as as part of MV, obviously, um, we 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 face um, we face a, a I mean difficulties uh, along the whole value chain along, but but a major thing and and that resonated uh, what you said resonated with with what we we experience, which I was sharing at the conference I was at EAG Get Twenty Three last week in Paris. Um, <laughs> We are uh, uh, working on CCS in, in Romania onshore uh, and uh, we face, uh, to say the least, reluctance from, yeah. from, from local communities. Yeah. And this is to say the least, right? And, um, and, and uh, our heartland, uh, Austria, uh, CCS is banned. And um, of course, on, on a on a personal point of view, uh, it is key for us to be able to uh, build CCS. Uh, but more globally, I think uh, the world has an interest in educating people so that we can actually implement CCS and not only mm -hmm. offshore. Offshore is obviously a e an easier place to be and and uh, so it's not really a question but i was really it resonated with me that uh, you have among other goals mm. uh, the key goal of educating yeah. and communicating and explaining in particular with children yeah. and but more generally the whole population mm. uh, do you intend actually there's a question do you intend to also is that only the Norwegian public, or is okay. there a plan to go outside? So uh, it's not limited to the Norwegian public. And what we do is, I mean, we communicate in many ways. So we have our, our website, we have uh, webinars, blogs, uh, all sorts of a different way to communicate. Uh, and and we, we open to other ideas as well. Uh, usually, I suppose most people know of us in, in Norway and it's easier to reach out to Norwegians. So we had, for example, last month, uh, the researchers night here at NTNU and we spoke there, there to students about CCS. Uh, but we're not limited. So to answer your question, we're not limited to Norway. We do also go into the European uh, uh, arena and talk there uh, about CCS, but less so at the general public level. And I think that's what we need to be better at in Gigi CCS. So um we have an activity in our value chains uh, uh, work package in giga ccs on uh, ccs and society and this will be looking at surveys uh, and that's looking outside of norway norway is quite simple really people don't have a lot of against ccs it's offshore as well which does make it easier uh, but people are quite accepting of an offshore uh, industry whereas on onshore and in europe it, it's less accepted so if you compare Germany and acceptance there to Norway, it's a very different story. So, so in short, we're we're very much open to going uh, further afield and discussing this and sharing this knowledge outside of uh, of Norway. And how we do that, we I think there's many ideas and ways we could uh, do it, uh, but we should think about how to do it. Yeah, open to ideas on that one. Um, I know this research that comes out of, I think it's the University of Cork, where they've done a lot of good research on, on how early you need to get on the ground in order to influence communities who are going to be living with this in their backyard. So you need to be getting in there very early. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. Uh, are, are there questions? 
others Should we emphasize the project I just presented, Giga CCS is not awarded yet. I didn't show the the timeline, but if we do get awarded, it will be announced in May next year. Uh, so we, we sit tight and hope for the best. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a very strong uh, partnership, so uh, let's let's hope. It was the only CCS uh, project that applied, so fingers crossed. Yeah, it's a good. Uh, it's good to mention it. Yes, and uh, and the kickoff first of January point five. Yeah. yeah. Any other question? Please <laughs> step in. I answered them all. That's good. <laughs> all right. Okay. So I I think what we need to do is to thank you very much for this presentation for your time. Thank you. Um, and uh, we wish you all the best <laughs> with yeah. Giga CCS, obviously. Yeah. Uh, we will be watching uh, the result uh, with uh, great attention. And uh, with this, we uh, I would like also to thank everyone for uh, attending today's session on behalf of uh, Oliver and, uh, and the whole force group. Uh, and um, I'm not too sure if there's another session before the year end, but if if not, uh, I wish you all uh, <laughs> a good end, a year end, and um, hopefully you will have a, a group session to think, think and uh, define uh, what we want to speak about and maybe sites to visit. With this, I wish you all a good evening. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye Thanks bye. for your time. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.